Hey, this is Kuna from the Council for Exceptional Children. Um, and through this clip, I am going to lay a very simple baseline for what we are talking about when we talk about budget and appropriations. Very, very basically, um, authorizers write laws and appropriators fund them. Um, and I'm going to help you understand exactly what that means. So, um, the Learning Opportunity and Achievement Act, uh, a bill that CEC endorsed, um, was introduced by Senators Hirono and Booker. The bill would provide resources for states, school districts, colleges and universities, K-12 schools, and others to address instructional loss caused by the coronavirus pandemic. It comes with a roughly three and a quarter billion dollar price tag. If that bill was enacted, the headline would probably read, Congress authorizes $3.25 billion to address learning loss during COVID. But there would not be any funding attached to that bill until it's considered by appropriators. So appropriators take authorization bills under consideration, but they're not bound by law to follow the spending levels. They really see authorization spending levels as a recommendation. Here's a perfect example. Um, the Student Support and Academic Enrichment State Grants. This program was authorized in 2015 through the Every Student Succeeds Act, and it provides funding for technology, music, art, counselors, a whole host of programs and personnel that are really critical to school operations and to student experiences. However, it was not funded by appropriators after the bill was enacted. And in fact, it didn't see any funding until a coalition of stakeholders got together to pressure Congress to pony up. Um, and here you can see the actual language of this law on the left and the appropriations spending levels on the right. So in the law, um, you can see that they have one rec what we would call a recommended funding level. And you can see from the appropriations language that um, appropriators still have yet to get to that desired funding amount. So um, appro the appropriations, um, the budget and appropriations cycle is an annual cycle. Um, it's something that we can count on at least at the beginning, although it starts to get murky at the end. So in um, typically in early February, but as late as March, some years, the president um, puts together a budget and sends it to Congress. This we all consider the formal beginning, the launch of the appropriations process. Um, that budget is non-binding and lawmakers really look at it as a recommendation. Um, just in the same way that authorizers, that appropriators see authorizing language um, with funding as a recommendation. It is not binding. Um, members of Congress can also influence this process. So they submit their own their own priorities to subcommittees. Um, and then in the late spring, early summer, Congress takes testimony from um, stakeholders, holds um, hearings, uh, listens to the heads of each of the departments, um, the federal departments, and then marks up bills. And that means they draft them, they go through the committee process of um, amending them and then passing them out of the committees. And then typically staff work through August recess to finalize appropriations bills and do some negotiating between the House bills and the Senate bills. Um, and usually in September, um, we see some kind of um, close to final product come out. Um, Unfortunately, that isn't exactly how things happened this year. Um, and so where we are right now is in the middle of uh, what we call a continuing resolution. And so that continuing resolution essentially bought Congress more time to decide the funding levels for um, fiscal, fiscal year 2021. Um, and so the bill extends current funding through December 11th. Now we have a new deadline, um, December 11th, for when Congress needs to finalize spending. 
Um, the fiscal year at the federal level is an October 1 through September 30th um, fiscal year. So Congress must act by September 30th and this year through the continuing resolution, they acted to buy more time. Um, this, is, this is a pattern that we've seen in recent years um, and was something that we expected because of the elections and the heightened political climate. Um, when we talk about funding in dollar amounts, I want to put into perspective exactly what we're talking about. So total federal spending in 2019 was roughly $4.4 trillion. Um, and if you look at the pie chart on the left, you'll see that only, um, only the gray areas are discretionary. And by discretionary, I mean up to Congress to decide the funding levels. Mandatory spending includes Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, um, and interest on our debt. Those are not spending decisions that Congress makes. They happen automatically. Um, and so Congress does not have the quote unquote power of the purse um, for that mandatory spending. Um, but when you look at the at the chart on the right, you'll see that roughly 1.3 trillion, so just over a quarter of spending, um, is uh, discretionary. Um, but of that slice of the pie, a slightly more than half of it goes to defense, um, and just over 70 billion of it um, is dedicated to education. So that is the size of the federal budget that is spent on education, um, set roughly 7% of discretionary spending. So, sorry, roughly 5%. So it's a pretty small pot. Um, nevertheless, there are ways for us to boost education spending and we work hard on it every single year. So CEC every year puts forward a funding request to Congress that incorporates the following programs that you can see all of these IDEA programs and the Javits uh, grant program as well. Um, while, so ideally we would ask for significantly more funding, um, these requests are based on feedback from appropriators um, and they are strategically placed at these spending levels. Um, we've strategized that asking for smaller increases that are more realistic is the most likely way to see an increase. Um, full funding of IDEA is our ultimate goal, but that would require essentially tripling current, current IDEA funding. Um, and that, that large amount scares off many appropriators. Um, and frankly, they're not given that much money to work with each year. And so it's not a demand that they can rise to in any given fiscal year. So we're working toward it incrementally, um, patiently with a smile on our faces, even though we know that the needs are really quite high. Um, and just, to, just a, a note, even in really lean years, IDEA funding does typically get um, priority for increases. Although they're small, um, they, do get, they do get some attention uh, from appropriators. And there are ways that you can work on those spending requests with us. Um, for example, um, through the Policy Insider, we have action alerts that will prompt you to um, write to your members of Congress or tweet at them, or if you feel so inclined, give them a call to um, vocalize or express our, our appropriations requests. Um, you can learn about the process and the progress of um, federal spending through the Policy Insider. Um, and if you have any questions or you want to do more, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. I'm always available. I love talking about federal spending. I'd love to get in the weeds um, and I'm always available. Thanks.